Alright, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon to all. So now uh, is the time is 1220 and actually uh, I do have class but I make this one uh, for the sake of you all for my certificate students uh, CBA1131 and also Diploma students the US one two three one for so half his class, right? Okay, uh topic it is about developing product and pricing strategies for those who uh recently know who I am. I am Miss Shabina Nodin. Um I will do some uh, this video lecture topic for topic eight since this uh, topic that actually we stop before we go, not before, but actually we had to go for our PKPP phase. And I think that everybody, all the students will take care of yourself, stay safe and healthy at your home. And please make sure you keep uh, sanitize your hand. And after you go out, please uh, keep wash. Uh, I mean, like, the, just go straight to take a bath and make sure you clean yourself because uh, this thing we can't see with our tangible eyes, right? Okay, so without further ado, uh, topic 8 is about developing products and pricing strategy. So I use the slide because slide is more, um, I can say like straightforward. And then if you use uh, the manual for the additional video notes, you can pay for your manual. Okay, so uh, let's we go for the learning objective. After learning this chapter, the student should be able to number one, explain the rules of the marketing and understand the functions of the marketing mix uh, to the businesses. So just to highlight to you all students, we have four marketing mix that we have to know and as the business student, you should know this. Okay, we have P for the first P is product, number two is price, number three is uh, place and number four is promotion. So this is what we call marketing mix. Huh? I repeat again, we have four phase. The first is product, second is price, the third is place and the fourth is promotion. Okay. So in this topic, we will cover on the product and price and later on for the topic nine, it will be covered by Sahafi on topic three, I mean sorry, for the promotion and also place. Okay. Alright, so after learning this chapter, the student will be able to number one, eight point one, identify the role of the marketing and the strategies, and eight point two, explain the product and pricing strategies. Alright, so the role of marketing and the strategies. So what is actually behind? Okay, the definitions of the marketing. Okay, uh, in other words, okay, for those who are uh, international students, somehow I will use a uh, two bilingual language like Bahasa Melayu to translate. Okay. Marketing also known as pemasaran, okay? So marketing as the planning and executing the conceptions, pricing, promotion, and distributions of the ideas, goods, and services to create exchanges that satisfy individual and organization goals. So we are talking about the concept of uh, uh, marketing itself, okay? And how the price for the product and also the services, and I was just now talking about the promotion, how that the company can make the promotion, uh, promosi lah, and how the distribution of the ideas, goods and services, example, let's say like uh, tailors, okay, they make some sketch, right, drawing, so that is come from the idea, and then they transform it into the design of the clothes, the dress, okay, so that is the ideas of the goods, okay, and when we are uh, sewing, okay, we do some tailor customized made, that one is services, huh? to create the exchanges that satisfy individual and organization goal. So, uh, marketing involves all decisions related to determining of the product characteristics, okay, like price, production specification, market entry date, distribution, promotion, and sales. So, this is talking about the character of the product itself, whether the product is uh, of course, when it comes to product, it's about tangible product yang boleh nampak, yang boleh kita lihat, yang boleh kita pegang, touch. We can smell it, we can hear it. Uh, so, kita, we, we use our sense okay, in order to, to have this character of products. And for, by, for the price itself, we can see the price tagging. Okay, we can see in terms of uh, 
how the price for each of the product is whether is value added to buy the product or the total price been offered and then production uh, specification in terms of the explaining about how this product can uh, be produced example when you go to like a uh, donut uh, producer right for example like we have the apple like a crispy cream and like uh, even uh, dunkin donut at the back you can see that those the guy is making the donuts right so this is about production specification and uh we go about the market uh mp date okay about uh how does uh this been stated in their date of the market of the product example when the date for this product to be sell and distribute there will be set to the date that example like your junk food right or maybe kind of the under the product like how much you the product cosmetic product or maybe like uh, medications uh, and then distribution where you can get because distribution is not just only um put aside on the place itself but we're talking about distribution how we can access to a sale product macam mana kita boleh dapatkan produk tersebut daripada kiosk ke ha? daripada outlet dia ke ha? and then the promotion we're talking about the promotion strategies this one will be explained by Sir Hafiz later in topic 9 we have uh, four uh, promotion bits which is uh, advertising we have sales promotions and then we have personal selling and then we have the public relations so that one is under promotion mix and also sales okay um yeah i'm talking about how the product being sales promotion and so forth right so marketing involves understanding the customer needs and their buying behavior okay and creating a consumer awareness providing customer service and maintaining relationship with the customer long after the sales transaction is complete so when we're talking about the marketing itself of course when we do marketing we want to fulfill the needs of the customer needs and want what's the difference between these two I, in my class i already highlight on this i believe that you also with other yeah with uh, sir hafiz also you have been highlighted on this customer needs adalah mengikut ke, keperluan okay, the basic needs of the customer apa keperluan utama for example we have clothes we have food and drinks we have shelter so this is the basic needs and whereby when we're talking about um the buy behavior how the process of they want to buy the product and how we can actually access the behavior macam mana kita boleh lihat tindakan dalam dia mau buat purchasing behavior tersebut macam mana dia mau buat tindakan membeli barang tersebut ha huh? and then um of course when we're talking about customer needs so okay, that is customer needs just now how about the customer wants customer wants adalah kemahuan the things that have been done let's say you have food and drinks but you want like food is like mcdonald for example and drinks you want like mccafe for example right or maybe you want like secret recipe or for example this is specific example and maybe like um you have clothes okay, you want like H&M or, or maybe you want like Padini or uh, maybe like shelter you want not only just ordinary house tak nak rumah biasa but you want to live, live in like in a condominium or maybe expensive apartment so that is what we call as wants huh? and then um, providing customer service okay we give some how we want to serve the customer okay bear in mind student we have the two different concepts here when we're talking about the customer customer mostly we we're talking about customer want their goods if they not they punya products their products but when we're talking about consumer mostly they want that how you can give and offering the service to them so consumer is more on service but customer is more on goods ataupun products ha? nampak ya perbezaan dulu and maintaining relationship with the customer long after the sale transaction is complete meaning to say how you want to make sure after the customer has made the purchasing behavior towards our product that we sell to them we still can maintain the relationship for example you buy like furniture from ikea so they send like your furniture to your home delivery service or maybe you buy like whole cocoa products right cocoa yeah cocoa products like water filter and then they give you free service for three months let's say okay and maybe you buy new car and then uh, for the charge level service will be free for 
uh, three times of the service. Uh, so that is actually how you maintaining the relationship with the customer after the customer have made the trans sales transaction complete. Right. So we have three in here. As you can see from the diagram here, we have the first one place marketing. Okay. Uh, what is place marketing? Uh, describe effort to market geographical area ranging from neighborhoods to the entire countries. So we need to say you do some marketing process, but you will be uh, what we call market your product within your neighborhood. Meaning to say, I give very simple example like Proton. So Proton is known as the national car for Malaysia. Okay, dijadikan sebagai satu produk kebanggaan negara kita lah Malaysia. And they've been actually been placed in this kind of geographical emulation. And we do have Malaysia with export to UK. We do have this product export to Indonesia, Brunei, Singapore, to all our neighborhood countries. So this is what we call this marketing, right? And for the cost related marketing, promotes the course on the social issue, physical fitness, recycling, or highway safety. I give very simple example. Uh, in this year, if I'm not mistaken, uh, let's say highway safety, right? Um, JPJ. I do not know what in Bahasa Melayu, tapi Jabatan Pengangkutan Jalan Raya lah, macam tu. So, this authority is giving something like uh, some uh, authority, okay? They give some uh, policy. Every single car, they must be equipped with baby car seat, okay? To make sure that for the safe and healthy of uh, especially the passenger involving babies and the children. So this is also the reason why so for those who are selling this baby car seat and also maybe like uh, what we call uh, seat belt uh, for the children. Uh, this is important. One of the indicators for those who the producer or supplier for this product will okay will do that according to this or maybe i can give some other example what happened right now like covid 19 we are required to use uh mask right so we have to use the mask and then we have to use uh sanitizer so this is the cost related marketing because we have this pandemic covid 19 right now and for the permission marketing involve asking customer for permission before sending them marketing message so i give people example like this if you realize when you open youtube right okay uh somehow this one they they actually they have shown you first right they have shown you like advertisement and then they will ask you uh whether you will skip the ad but in here why i have to relate with the permission marketing because if you're willing to see it after you you will not skip the ad okay you will just proceed okay and see and watch this advertisement and mostly it takes around two seconds after that you can skip the ad before you can view your video right the video that you want to watch so um permission marketing is something like asking from the the customer whether you wish to be promoted by them or not or maybe I can maybe give some other example. Um, maybe they use like telemarketing, right? So telemarketing will call you or telemarketers, right? Uh, I'm from International Islamic College. Uh, so we want to do some uh, promotion on the students, new students in take for this blah, 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 blah. And we have, uh, are you interested? You have children or they continue their study, blah, blah, blah. So you do you have some time to speak on this? So they have some script, you know, scripted to ensure that whether you've been asked certain information, whether you can go for it, right? So they will send some the marketing message on it, right? Uh, so uh, if they say yes, then they can proceed with the marketing. If no, they will not, okay? They will not uh, proceed with the marketing. All right, so we move to the role of the marketing in society. Okay, so we have three here. We have needs and wants, and then we have the second one, exchanges and transaction, and the third one we have the four utilities. Okay, so the first one, okay, needs represent a difference between the actual state and ideal. State need creation motivation to buy the products. Okay, so 
as I told you before, so why we need that product? Basic needs is about water, food, shelter, and also uh, drink. Is it? Water uh, and <laughs> water drink is same. Water, uh, food, and then shelter and clothes. So this is the thing why we need it because it's a ba basic needs. But if I'm asking you right now, what else the basic need? Handphone, Wi-Fi, and that one is not categorized under needs, okay? And then for the ones, uh, based on the needs, but shape your desire by exposing you to the alternatives. I told you before, if let's say we have the food and the drinks, you don't want like the common food and drinks. I don't want like in the street hawkers food, they say you want to have fast food because you have the alternative. They say you have like... Uh, you have shelter okay you do have like a very simple shelter to protect yourself and your family but also then maybe you choose to have like i want to live it like in a very expensive and luxury condominium and apartment okay or maybe you have like your your clothes okay i want like uh the brand name like h and -M. i told you before that like, maybe other a brand name okay so that is one so the exchanges uh, and also transaction, uh, this is the exchange process trading, something of the value for something else of the value. So the transaction, the point at which an exchange of the party A give a party B uh, a dollar in the exchange for Coke. I don't think so the Coke is one dollar right now, right? It's more than that, it's like in the nation. So in order to get one thing, of course, before this, we have butter system. Butter system means what? I give you cow, you give me like be uh, sorry, I give you cow, you give me goat, okay? So I give you rice, you give me chicken. So we have the butter system. But for this uh, transaction, I right now, currently, okay, our, nowadays, I give you money, if let's say I want to buy Coke, a bottle of Coke right now, 2 ringgit 90 or 3 ringgit, right? Small bottle, not a big bottle. So I give you 3 ringgit and then you give me a cook, right? So that is transaction. And the four utilities, we have four in here. The first one we have, what is a uh, utility? Okay, utility is something of the value to the customer. So it said from utility when the organization change raw materials into finished goods. Example, when you want the donuts, okay, the raw materials is you have the flour. You have the sugar, you have cheese, and then being transformed into the end finished product will become like donut. You cannot just take the flour and then become donut. No, you have to process it. That is the form utility. And the time and place utility when the firm makes the product available when and where the customer wants them. Okay, let's say you want to buy Domino's Pizza. So you have to go there. Maybe you can call, but you can call them at the same time they can deliver it to you. Or maybe you can go to their restaurant. Uh, and then possession utility, the satisfaction that the buyers get when they actually possess a product, both legally and physically. I give a very simple example. You really want, okay, example, you want is like to buy a new phone, let's say, right? After your mom, dad is giving something like pocket money to you, you collect it and then you buy handphone. Ah, so that is what we call as possession utility. You feel that after I collecting the money, I save the money, and then I will get my, my dream phone uh, example, right? So that is possession utility. All right, so we're moving to the next one. So this is about the marketing concept and understanding the today's uh, consumer. Okay, so we look into marketing concept and underlying philosophy that guides all the marketing decision, all activity is based on the idea that the company should stress the customer needs and wants while seeking long-term profitability and coordinating their own marketing effort to achieve the, the company's long-term goals. Especially, we have covered the previous one just now, earlier part. So, we need to say marketing concept is to fulfill the needs and wants customer, that's it, huh? for of course the organization goal. Okay, and then we look into the today's customer are very sophisticated 
they are price sensitive and demanding and informed. So let's say they are talking about the new handphone in the market. So they are full actually eager to know what is that. Okay. So of course they want to following the trend, especially like your generation, right? To following the trends. Okay. And then uh, for the B, uh, the bias decision process, number one, uh, mostly what they have to follow, actually not to follow, this is a routine, right? When we want to buy something, the first one, identifying the problem. Why we want to buy a pro? Why we want to buy a problem? Why we want to buy the handphone? Okay, so maybe you want to see. I want to have a better and excellent and quality camera, example. Or second, look for the solution to your problem. I believe that this new model can cope with my problem. I want to have a better or excellent and quality, high quality camera. If none of the more obvious solutions seem satisfying, you gather the additional information. So you will keep have maybe like doing some research, maybe do some google searching where is the additional model that can cope with your problem and the consumer are now ready to make the choice because you have the alternative of the id okay and additional choices and then you will do evaluation of the choices so uh you see the cognitive dissonance okay one thing this is a term huh? cognitive dissonance is the buyer remorse remorse thing, something like react Okay, how do you react after making a major purchase, thinking about all the alternative rejected and wondering whether one of them might have been a better choice. So, uh, when we're talking about this one, uh, yes, they are thinking which is the best. Of course, there will be the concept opportunity cost, cost yang perlu dilepaskan lah, because basically you have 1000 plus and the money is only enough to buy one food, right? So, you will think all the alternative that you have rejected to buy this the main choice for that product okay the main product that you choose for yours maybe your smartphone right so of course there were you will wonder and thinking many times because it's involved high high end products melibatkan cost yang tinggi jadi kita akan berfikir banyak kali lah is it this is the right choice okay and of course they will wonder whether one of them being a better choice so the last resort when you have this the final decision to make a choice so that one we call the situation of that customer or consumer we call as cognitive dissonance huh? all right and then for the c factors that influence the buyer decision process we have culture budaya lah okay the process of social class and then reference to self-image and also situation factor okay the first one Factors that influence the buyer decision process in terms of the culture. I believe like a Malaysian culture, when we buy something, okay, uh, tendency we like to have like bargain process, you know. Ala cincai lah, something like, uh, Toke, can you give me something discounted price on this product because of the culture. Our culture like to bargain, you know. And then the second one, according to the social class. I give very simple example. When we using like a flight, okay. So somehow for the flight, we have like high class, uh, middle class and also low class. For the high class, mostly for the business class, they use to travel using flight. So they will choose the business class for them because they also get some privilege for them because they frequently using flight service, uh, aeroplane, I mean like uh, using aeroplane, yeah. You know, okay. And then reference group, uh, this is the group whereby we put some idol I don't know, yeah, it's like model like you want to follow as a reference. I like the way how we dress, especially like K pop style, like foreign style. Okay, I want to be like this, I want to be like that. So, this is our reference group. They used to have like Korean celebrity or actor as how the way they dress up and so forth. Uh, and then self image, of course, someone they want to be like to prove themselves, they want to show that something that they have better in proving themselves, right. And particularly, they want to show that they can like very smart, handsome, they want to be beautiful. Of course, we're talking about self-image, right? People will see how you dress up. Because I, I remember my, my lecture have put before, how the way you dress actually referring to how you think, okay? Your thinking skill. You cannot go to the class by having like dress to go to club. You know club, like clubbing, for example. You cannot perform your prayer by having like you want to go to the place that suppose you, example, you want to go to hiking, let's say, but you want to go to Musola, you want to pray, so that is not suitable, right? So this is talking about the self-image and then 
situational factor, we talking about the situation why we have to buy the that products. Example like COVID right now, why we have to buy this sanitizer, why we have to buy this mask. So this is the factor why influence the buying decision process. And then the last one, we have marketing research and also customer database. Uh, we do have market, market research, what's in market research, the process of gathering and analyzing information about the customers, market and related marketing issue. And then we have also database marketing, the process of recording and analyzing customer interaction, preferences and buying behavior for the purpose of contacting and translating with the customer. So this is uh, about how we want to collect the data. So like market research, uh, this is talking about like, like this. I give a very simple example. Every Saturday or Sunday, Tesco will do something like uh, introducing new products. So they do like uh, market test, right? Okay, they try the, for example, like sausage, and then they give to the customer who want to try, and then the customer will give some response. So this is market research. Okay, and then for the database marketing, uh, mostly what they, they use to like, uh, like this okay every single retailers we have like membership card right okay so through the membership card in order for the customer to have that card so they have to fill out the form so through the fill out the form all the information details about the customer is already being collected from that and when you swipe the card you get some points some like uh, yeah, total points collected through that, right? So through that, they indirectly doing database marketing, okay? Uh, for this name, like the Sipulan, Sipulan example, and then they have the related of the information inside that, okay? The date of birth, the, the income, uh, the occupation, okay, the job, the level of education, everything being put into this database marketing, right? Indirectly. All right, so we're moving to uh, the factors that influence the buyer decision process. I actually have touched just now. Okay, we can skip this one. Maybe you can refer in the manual. Okay, in the manual, where is the manual? Yeah, okay, we have the manual. So you can have this uh, extra reading on here. Okay, and then this also been stated by me just now. Now we're moving to building relationship with the customer. Okay. So we have the relationship marketing or known as CRM, okay, uh, focusing on the establishing or learning relationship with each customer and the relationship between the customer and company does not end with the sales transaction, instead it is a view as ongoing process, okay, so meaning to say once you do uh, some transaction by trailing, it's only not stopping there. It will have some continuous part. Okay, example like I told you just now, they will continue like asking for delivery services. Maybe they have free charge, a uh, free uh, service. Okay, and uh, maybe they used to offer it to something like uh, better service package. Okay, so this is how they want have to have the relationship marketing with the customer to have. In short word, to have the prolonged relationship untuk mendapatkan hubungan yang lebih panjang dengan customer tersebut. And for the benefits, uh, acquiring a new customer can cost up to five times as much as keeping existing one. But long term customer buy more, take less of the company time, bring in a new customer, and are less price sensitive because they are already loyal customer. So you wouldn't actually have to uh, spend more time in order to do the marketing. Uh, I mean like marketing process to him or her, to your respective customer because they're already loyal to the brand and they won't bother about the price after all because they already know how quality the product are. And then uh, uh, satisfied customer are best advertisement for the product because they will give some like testimony and response towards your product. Okay, so from their testimony and response towards the product, they can actually indirectly market our product. And then uh, the firm proceeds to offer superior customer service find that they can charge as much as 10% more, more than their competitors. So we need to say in here is uh, for the customer service charge itself, they can charge for 10% uh, better than the competitors if your service is better. And then research show, not sure, shows that dissatisfied customer may tell as many 20 other people about their bad experience. No need 20 other people, but it's only one sector right now. We'll just click with the share button, or maybe you just post in your Instagram, your Facebook, 
in your yeah all the social media marketing finish is done your product will be totally loose okay because due to your your customer already revealed their bad experience and also that as this testimony towards your product and then the last one one-to-one -one marketing involves individualizing a firm's marketing effort for the single customer to accommodate the specific customer's needs so we have four steps identifying your customer okay and then we differentiating among them among them and then interacting with them and customizing your product or service to fit each individual customer need. So this is basically about personal selling. Huh? Later, later, topic nine on that. Okay, and then uh, planning your marketing strategies uh, has been stated just now. Okay, examining your current marketing situation. So we will review the past performance. Okay, um, how we want to evaluate the competition. So in terms of we identify their strengths and weaknesses and of course uh, we will analyzing the factors of the environment for example like economic condition natural environment social and cultural trends laws and regulation and also technology so that is involved faster actually it's about politics okay it's about uh, economics it's about social technology it's about ethics and also legal system and the step two is assessing your opportunity and setting your objective new marketing opportunity we selling more of our existing products okay in the current market for example like market penetration so indirectly i used to use like this market penetration we need to see you expanding your product to another country let's say proper not only in malaysia but also have in another country neighborhood let's say in indonesia in uh, Singapore, Brunei, uh, and Thailand, and then for the creating new product for the current your current market, new product development, meaning to say the product is already uh, have current in the market. Okay, uh, I give very simple example. Um, let's say uh, you want to have like your mask. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, the mask uh, before this is only like they take start with one layer and then they have two layer three layer and now it can up to five layer and then sometimes they can have like ear loops sometimes for head loops see because the product is following what is the requirement from from the customer so even though it's a new product like mask okay actually not new to new but it's current in the market but they create something like the new features towards the product so that is a new product development they do some development towards that product and then for the creating new product for the new market i uh so this is for diversification uh yesterday i told the same example to my students um let's say uh like mcdonald right during chinese new year they come up with like the menu from there is like uh, sorry prosperity burger alright so during this uh, our current merdeka day you realize on the mcdonald come out with like nasi lemak because nasi lemak is popular among these malaysian people it symbolizes that nasi lemak is from malaysia and if you go to like india we do have like not we call as big mac okay but they do they do have like maharaja mac it's meaning to say like they have tower burger but inside they have something like vegetable patty why do they have vegetable patty because in india uh, they have some sensitivity to eat meat so what they come up the menu from meat patty into vegetable patty and of course they do have chicken patty they do have like fish uh, fillet patty and so forth Okay, so that is creating new product for the new market in diversification, right? And then um, for the marketing objective, uh, we do have, uh, sorry, sorry, the third one we have also selling your existing product in new markets. So for example, like geographic expansion. So in here, you already have the, the, the product itself, okay, but in the new geographic area. 
uh, example like I told just now, uh, proton, okay, uh, yeah, some proton they already have in the market, okay, but they expand into the another geographic location, okay, it can be like market penetration just now, but in here, they used to have the new market example, like proton, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Suprema S before. They do collaboration with uh, Proton and also Lotus in UK. So this is one of the new product. They come up with this, uh, sorry, existing product, okay, Proton. And then they do some combination with Suprema S with using engines from Lotus. Uh, so that is geographic expansion. And for the marketing objective, we have the common marketing objective is to achieve the certain level of the market share. So they have a firm portion of the total sales within the market. So that is marketing objective. Okay, meaning what is your goal for the marketing purposes. And then the objective are specific and measurable. Of course, we used to know how much that we want to aim for this marketing objective and how we want to measure it. And then we also have uh, like what we call as demography. Okay. And they have also geographic, geodemographic behavior usage and niche marketing. I think this is another part I mentioned, right? So marketing strategy consists of a uh, step three, yeah? developing a marketing strategy to reach those objectives, consisting of dividing your market into segments and niche, choosing your target market and the position you would like to establish in those market and developing a marketing mix to help you get there. So that is marketing strategy and it will be, might relate this one with uh, marketing mix mostly. Yeah? And then dividing market into segment, we have market segment and also market segmentation. What's the difference between both here? Uh, market segment homogeneous group of the groups within a market that are significantly different from each other. So you will segment the market according to maybe like the Sorry. Okay, and then for the geographic, okay, this is according to market segment, according to different place between rural area and urban area. Rural area mostly the cost of the price more lower, cheap, consider cheap, compared to the urban area that might be more expensive. And for the geo demographic, is referring to the place itself and also at the same time according to um, geographic, demographic, okay? Uh, I give a very simple example. Um, like this, okay? If you want to write uh, like senior citizen, a uh, worker to automas, they want to use like public transport, right? Let's say they are from village, okay, from rural area, they want to go to home time. Maybe they want to go to their children, okay. Maybe for the particular common people like us, they will just, they will charge maybe 50 ringgit, okay, for the, maybe like, uh, car, sorry, a bus, okay. Okay. But for those these uh, senior citizen, they will give half price if they say they are 60 years and above because due to their gen sorry not gender but their age. Huh? All right, and then behavior we are talking about how the behavior okay of you to buy the product. They say you are the one who are like to collecting um stand. So you will buy like book uh, for putting your stamps, okay? I think no more people have that hobby, right? Or maybe uh, I think it's like your behavior is like to ride the big motorcycle. So you will buy like helmet, you will buy like jacket, you will buy like um, uh, your shoes, okay? Something like, um, uh, yeah, it's like, like common shoes, but it's for the rider's shoes, okay? And then for the usage, let's say you 
are frequently use the certain product, right? Maybe you like to bake, but you will buy the utensil for baking. For example, you will buy like uh, roller, okay, you will buy like uh, microwave or maybe stove. You will buy like a uh, mix blender because this is the thing that you need in order to buy the products uh, to use and produce the product. And then niche marketing, mostly uh, in terms of the marketing, uh, you want to have like a very uh, limited edition example. Uh, do you guys, for those who are likely to have a different, uh, I give example like Rolex watch, right? Very expensive. So I know that you know what this is like. So they will do like very exclusive okay, marketing for those this kind of product because they are very high end products and you cannot get this kind of watch in any shop, any like what we call top or watch shop, right? You have to go to their stores, even you want to do like service and maintenance of the product, also you have to go to their stores, okay? So this is how they do the niche marketing. Okay, and then, um, yeah, that is market uh, market segmentation. Just now, grouping customer with similar characteristic behavior and needs. So they have the different there. Okay, now we're moving to the next one. Okay, how are we choosing your target markets? Okay, uh, I used to have the STP segmentation, targeting, uh, and also STP positioning. Okay. Choosing the market requires careful judgment. So the marketers use a variety of criteria to choose the target markets. So they have size of segment, competition in the segment, sales and profit potential, compatibility with company resources and strength, cost, growth potential, and also risk. Okay, and then uh, we have three popular strategies for reaching a target market. Number one, we have undifferentiated marketing, mean mass marketing. Ignore difference among the buyers and offer only one product or product line to satisfy the entire market. So this one, um, this is talking about differentiation. Okay, differentiation. Uh, ignore. Ignore. Meaning kita kita tidak mengambil kira ada keberbagaian lah. Jadi if they say we want to promote handphone. Handphone, handphone, <laughs> yeah, handphone is uh, mass marketing, you know, you, everywhere you go to any shop that selling phone, they will do the same mass marketing to you, you do not have a like, specific model that your is size like this, you will be like triangle, you will like pyramid uh, size or shape, no, huh? but it will be safe. Okay, and then differentiated marketing, manufacturing or selling a variety of product or several target group, group customer. Example, you have team like uh, students to buy your product. Okay, so of course uh, you would give like a reasonable price for students, or maybe you want to sell a product for the senior citizens. Of course, you have to give something like discounted price on it because it's according to the target customer groups. Okay. And then concentrated marketing used whenever company resources are limited, acknowledging that different market segments exist and you choose to target just one. So this is involving like uh, how we differentiate okay, into other market segments. And uh, they used to like specific. Give very simple example. Let's say uh, you want to use like dress but the dress is only used by you limited edition there will no other dress came with me so i used to use this like this seller so this seller will concentrate the marketing towards you only the particular dress one for you i give very simple example like that to jimmy choose they used to customize your size of your feet according to one single uh, pair of uh, shoes so no others will see with it. It's like Cinderella shoes. So that is concentrated marketing. You focus only for one. And target also only for one. Okay, I will stop right now because I just uh, to have half of the slide and another half I will do for the part two. Part two, eh? for part two. Inshallah, thank you for listening up to this video lecture. I will upload in here and you can have like um, 
any question you can ask your lecturer, you can ask me too. And thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you.